G'day and welcome to my very quick tutorial on tunnelling. This is a strategy, a tactic that was used during World War I to try and break the stalemate as talked about in the Stage 6 Modern History Syllabus. As you can see here we have your typical trench scene. We've got one trench over here, the second over here, no man's land in the middle. The usual tactics involve getting these men across no man's land to take the other trench and then go on their merry way further and further. However, as this was quite difficult, other things were used to try and break the stalemate, and one of those was tunnelling. Now with tunnelling, the idea was relatively simple. You got a mining company who would dig a shaft down and then begin to dig underneath the earth towards the other trench. They had to usually be quite specialist, use specialist equipment depending on the soil. So for example, for the Somme, there was quite a chalky soil, which was good for mines. At other places, where they had really moist and not great soil, they'd have to shore up the tunnel really well, and they'd have to use specialist water pumping equipment. The simple idea was to dig towards the enemy trench, obviously without them finding out that that's what you're doing. Continue working. Sometimes this would take weeks, months to do a trench, so it was obviously quite an expensive operation in both men and materials to do this. Uh, so they would dig towards the enemy trench, obviously they're looking to get underneath. And as they get closer to the trench, uh, uh, people commented you could actually hear like the, the noises outside. So it would have been quite a surreal place to be in. Uh, obviously appalling conditions, dark, very poorly ventilated, very stuffy. Once you'd reach underneath the mines, the concept was to lay a whole bunch of explosives, probably not your, your classic Hollywood style dynamite sticks. They were referred to as mines, and many of the mines were many, many tons. So, for example, during the Battle of the Somme, they used really massive mines. The biggest mine, however, was at Saint Alois during the Battle of Messines. A mine was, was 42 tons of explosives. Some people claim, it's quite hard to, to find a definitive answer on this, but some people claim it was actually heard in London. That's how large the blast was. Uh, so the concept was, you'd blow the miner, and this would leave a huge crater. Now obviously the point was, you're destroying a, a trench, which made it much, much easier for, for these troops over here to kind of travel over. Uh, there's obviously less resistance if there's a hole in the ground rather than a trench with machine guns and the like in it. But also, uh, the lip of, of these on the other side made for quite a good ready-made trench here. Obviously further, further on that side. So once this occurred, both sides would rush into this mine and try and take it. So it's quite a strategic area. And obviously your side is, is kind of at an advantage because they know what's happening. But mining was an incredibly dangerous activity. If if the other side heard a mine or found out there was a mine, they would actually dig counter mines. They would actually try and dig underneath that mine and, and blow it up. Or sometimes mines would accidentally meet up. Yeah, as you can see, I tried to, to put as much detail as possible in there. So to summarise, tunnelling, a tactic used to try and break the stalemate, was quite effective in destroying trenches when it was used, but it was incredibly costly, so not used all the time, and it was certainly not a game changer when it came to tactics used to break the stalemate.